Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we have another opportunity to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. This week, I'm going to be highlighting Jordan Peterson's works, a professor from the University of Toronto that's been very influential for me in, in taking my own ideas and articulating them even further. He's all about the internalized ideal of God or spirit, something much different than what most people take it to be. Uh, so avoid this teaching at your own peril. You have to deal with trust versus a lot of betrayal that's in the world. So it's going to require some faith on your part. It's all about a kind of sacrifice that we make. We do something now, like a bargain with the future, so that something may happen later on. Like going to college and sacrificing your partying self in order to work for the degree because it's going to lead you somewhere. And it's always a balance between what we know and what we don't know. And yoga is certainly one way to explore and discover that which is beyond the known spaces in your life. Well, in order to do that, you have to do what he calls tolerate your insufficiency. The fact that you know you have things that are off, right? And uh, you have to maybe look more into the shadow dynamics because once you accept what karma is, you know that you can do things that make things better and you know that you do things that make things worse. I always say to people, are you willing to admit that you've made choices in your life where things didn't work out as well because of those choices? Almost everybody says yes. And then I said, but you've also made choices in your life where things did work out well. Don't you acknowledge that as well? Most people say yes. So that's karma. And yet the great thing about doing the yogic path is it not only gives you a mode of perception that's based on simple clarity about your anatomy, what's going on in your body, but it says that you can have an insight that releases you from the field of both becoming and being, which has suffering connected to it. And then experience a certain kind of transcendence in such a way that even suffering can sometimes appear to be good even though it never feels good. And that's one thing that nobody argues, right? Nobody argues against their own pain. Nobody asks if the pain is real. So pain, in some ways, is kind of like an ultimate reality. The Buddha said that, didn't he? But the whole thing is that we have to be motivated. We have to find a goal that's worthy to aspire to. Because wisdom, in the yoga sense, teaches you not only to live honorably amidst the tragedies of life, Right? joyfully participate in the sorrows of the world, as Joseph Campbell would say. But it gives you a motive for your own existence with a triumphant twist. We all like happy endings, don't we? And so it's not going to do us any good if we just experience censure and condemnation. No, we have to develop our character in a certain, certain, certain way by giving ourselves responsibility to meaningful action. And that's why yoga starts off with yamas and niyamas. Get your ethical act together and uh, realize that each one of us is inhabiting a story, like a framework, and we live to what that story tells us. Uh, but it teaches us how to move from our insufficiency, what's not good enough in us, to where we want to go. So there's a goal-setting quality to this. And positive emotion, that feel-good vibe, is generated by moving towards something that you value and want. And not just even if you accomplish it, just moving in that direction, there's a sense of felt rightness. And that's what yoga really teaches you. Um, you have to aim at something. For sure, you can't hit what you're not aiming at. Uh, or like you say, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So you've got to have a focus. That's called ekagrata, one-pointedness in yoga. And a lot of people don't do this because once they specify what they want, they also specify the conditions for failure. So for some people, rather than facing the, the failure, even though they might, they might succeed, they don't want to take that chance. They're so afraid. And so they don't accomplish anything. And in yoga, what you learn is that it gives you a vision and a moral system, and the stories that it tells you is how to live. And there's an oral tradition. This is why studying with the teacher is important. And they articulate it in the best of all possible ways and teach you how to continue to evolve. So we're like the sled dogs. <clears throat> we, need a, we need a load to pull. And if we don't have a load, we feel lost. So accept the yoke of yoga. 
and ask yourself that question. What kind of load do you want to pull? I hope it's a spiritual one.